The best example, the best experience I ever had in health literacy and cultural competence was as a young medic between combat operations, we went into a mountain yard village, Bato, southern i -Corps, right near the tri-border where the Ho Chi Minh Trail came into Vietnam, near Cambodia, Laos, and the Vietnam border. We're in a very primitive village. The mountain yards were bartering people. They, did, they talked about sunrise and sunset. They grew crops. They were very healthy. They only ate organically because they grew it, okay? They were physically active every day. There was no obesity there. And they were kind, kind people, very small. The men were about 5'2", five, 5'3", five, on average, but they were stronger than the average American. And they didn't have, weren't plagued by many of the diseases we had. So I went to do what was called a MedCap, a Medical Civil Action Project. And in that village, of course, I had my medical bag, and we went in and spoke to the village chief. And uh, being the American, I was in a hurry. Let's get all the sick people out here, line them up, and I'm going to tell you what you need to do to make them better. The village chief, of course, would have nothing of that. He sat down with me. We sat in a thatched hut with a little hole in the floor that had long bamboo straws. Underneath was this big urn of perpetually fermenting stuff, which in our country would be called a general anesthetic, okay? But they, <laughs> they, 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 sip, this, they sip this stuff. And... They brought in food, and, the, and it was interesting. I under, get it now, but the village chief was trying to figure out who I was and what my values were before he would allow me the privilege of caring for his most precious assets, his village people. And this is a couple of hours we're doing this, and I'm impatient. I've got to get going. You know, I want to get these people. Finally, we exchange information. He's asking me, where do you live, you know, through an interpreter. Uh, are you married? Do you have children? And after a while, we bring in people. And the first person is a little girl. The little girl is probably eight years old or so. They, again, we didn't know because they don't, have, they don't tell time in years or months like we do. It's sunrise and sunset. So it's kind of interesting. In fact, we gave some of the kids little watches we got at the PX, and they all had them down upside down. And they used to go, look, they, they, they had no idea what it was, but it was something cool to put on their wrist. So they bring the little girl in, and she, had, she was an important person. I don't know if she was his granddaughter, but somebody very close, but she was at the head of the line. And as I looked at her, she had a bunch of scabs all over her. And as you may know, it's, it's impetigo, just a bacterial infection of the skin. So I thought, I'm going to look like a genius here. So for those of you who are old enough, you remember back in 1969 and 70, it wasn't hard to be a doctor or a special forces medic. There were only two antibiotics, penicillin and streptomycin. We had the big vats of Pfizer Hex that came in those green jugs that nobody could pick up, and which is surgical soap. So I said to the interpreter, okay, tell her to take this, and I poured the soap out. Have her wash three or four times a day. Keep her hands out of her eyes. Don't pick the scabs. And, and washing means in that river where they dump all of their excrement, of course, and, you know, and so none of the public health is, is being practiced there. And then I thought, okay, I better give her something else. So I counted out 40... Pen VK pills, little white ones, and I gave them. I said, now take four of these, one four times a day, and I'll be back in a week or so, and I'll check on you. And I went away. We went on another combat mission. I came back. We went through the same process when I came back, and she walks in, and she's looking better. The scabs are falling off, and I'm thinking, whoa, I'm feeling really good. The village chief thanks me. He gives me a bracelet, a mountain yard bracelet. He gives me a ring and a crossbow, a ceremonial crossbow, which I still have today. And he thanks me for helping his community, and then they have a mahogany box that they take out. And he, out of the mahogany box, they take out this necklace, and it's 40 Pen VK pills. <laughs> and the interpreter says to me, the village chief would like to thank you for this. He did as you said. He took four of these beads every day and put them on the vine. And now they will use this to keep their people healthy and well as time goes on. And the little girl wore the necklace, and that's what made her better. Best, absolute best illustration I ever had in my whole life of health.